I was desperate in need for a role model, for a mentor, for a father figure, and most of all, for a superhero. People back then, they had Batman, they had Superman, they had Spider-Man. My hero was a real person, and his name was Bruce Lee. When I first came into this, um, into the States from Haiti, the first movies that I was introduced to was um, Into the Dragon and Hot Potato. You know, and both of those movies actually starred Jim Kelly. So that was, that was a big influence, you know, to see a brother on screen, you know, like doing martial arts was like, yo, wow. And I, I learned about people like, like Bill Wallace and Joe Lewis, who I later be, you know, got to train with. Let's see, I was probably 14 or 15. I met uh, Master Moses Powell at the St. John's Community Center in Brooklyn. I was uh, introduced to uh, Grandmaster Powell by uh, Little John Davis. I think Professor V had met with Doc, and just at the location where they were on Atlantic Avenue, was just an ideal place and something that Professor V was one person that when you work well with him and I admire that, people have ego, rank wise. They gotta puff up and try to impress you. I like people to do that, not, not cash it in any day, but he had a very humble spirit. He says he's a white belt. Well, one particular would be Professor Moses Powell, who uh, developed the art of Sanuka's Roof. Very impressive art. Uh, he trained under Professor V. Uh, you have my, my, one of my instructors also, uh, Professor Galanti, uh, trains, trained under Professor V and Professor Moses Powell. So he trained under both. So that's a pretty strong line. Yes. So, and I trained under Professor Galanti and Professor V. And we do a lot of the stuff that Moses Powell does too, with the rollouts and break falls and all that stuff, which is pretty impressive. Um, you know, one person that comes to my mind was William Oliver. I mean, he was one of my idols. I mean, this guy, his physical stature, you know, he wasn't very big, but he was so dynamic. You know, he was so dynamic. Seagal, he knew what he was doing. Seems to be a shitbag now, but, but Seagal, when he moved, he was doing, he was doing it that it would work. while guys continue to grow. And the same guys who I had no problems fighting with and beating them up, I realized that I, I didn't have that confidence anymore. And when I got to college, I had an opportunity to take a martial arts self-defense class. I needed one credit to matriculate. And um, as a matter of fact, that was Bronx Community College. Part of it was William Oliver's class down the block, the court battle, and I think that was 76. It actually went as far back as slavery. If, if you look at Capoeira, you'll see strains of what is 52, how we did the hands, how we did the movement. Uh, when the Western boxing came into view, you started to see things, the pretty things like the shift, the footwork, the slapping, pop, pop, pop. It is unbelievable the, um, the, the amount of knowledge that's involved in all of this. And a lot of people may say, all I want to know is how to defend myself. And what do I have to do? Even with the awards that Mayor Kaji people gave me because of it, didn't help me feel better because I felt like I let people down. I almost felt like, why did I do it? You know, did I, was it my ego that allowed me to do it? And I was down on myself for many, for many years and, and I refused to talk about it. I didn't talk about the bank robbery for, for years. I would refuse to be interviewed about it. I became more humble because I knew what I was capable of and I didn't want to hurt people. <laughs> incredible sex symbol. I mean, these women look great. 
but they also are the first films in which women fight in the Hollywood market. So there's something really powerful going on with that kind of crossover between like a beautiful woman and a strong woman. And the community that I came up in, it was rough being a female. Um, there were a lot of things going on that, that people would try to abuse the girls or, um, and we didn't know any better. I mean, you know, all we knew is we had to fight a lot. There were, there were gangs in my community. They talk about gangs today. They do a drive-by now, which I call very chicken. In those days, everything was hand-to-hand -hand combat. Originally, the Getter Brothers was uh, supposed to have been a family thing with my brothers. Had nothing to do with other guys and other gangs. It was a brother thing. We lived in the South Bronx. We called ourselves Getter Brothers. We were brothers from the ghetto. I trained Lee. Lee was the star of the movie Wild Style. Um, when Charlie Aaron, prior to Charlie Aaron making the movie Wild Style, he called me up and he said, Nathan, I'm thinking about making one of the first rap movies and graffiti movies. I want to, he said, I want to put them together. Which is where you see hip hop combines with Kung Fu uh, or martial arts in general, right? where hip hop started and spread because it allowed the youth to express themselves. It gave those youth that were off balance a way to express themselves and to find their balance and to define themselves in it, right? And that's what martial arts is about. Like I said, aligning your mind, body, and spirit to express yourself clearly, fully, truly. You know, we do things and we try to mimic somebody else. So a lot of time, my, like my mother was a great salsa dancer, and when I started doing the, the up rocking, the rocking, the rock dance, what we call it back in the semi, the rock dance, um, I was trying to mimic certain people because these guys were good in what they did. But listening to, remember Bruce Lee's you know, philosophy of how things flow, how things are better, how you take something and change and make it different, what I would do is I would copycat the person, take everything they did, and now change it in my way. So you have Bruce Lee, who's a cha-cha champion in Hong Kong, you know, which is essentially black music. If you listen to all their early Motown, those records were cha-cha records. My house music dancing has influenced my movement in martial arts. The other way around. The other way around. The other way around. Now they're, they're interchangeable. Now they have, but initially it was through house music that um, my movements became more fluid. Calculation, music is math also. I, I look at math as music appreciation, art, time, and healing. That's what math is to me. Because everything has its own math. DNA, everything, math basically. So karate fighters, they're looking math, the connection, how they're gonna hit their opponent, all that is math. You know, even with music, you know, if you listen to today's music in terms of, you know, I, I'm an old soul. I love old R&B and old music, you know, from the 60s and early 70s. Wow. You know, I, I think we're, we're like a lot of nationalities. We love to just see a good old throwdown fight. Well, it took, it took uh, first of all, it took a lot of respect for the martial arts and, and the truism of what the martial arts represented. And, and to have that level of trust and confidence in your ability, you know, your in-depth perception, the ability to, to, to gauge, the ability to check your reflexes and all of that, and not to overcome fear. You know, overcome fear. A little bit of craziness, too. I, I endured only because I wanted to show them they couldn't put me out. And I, I received a lot of injuries, and, but I was getting better and better and better. And uh, pretty soon I was the baddest in the school. The, the principles and the philosophical things that go along with being a better human being, that is what's rich. 
that is the that is the essence of the martial artist for me to be able to utilize his art or her art to um, bring about that part of the humanity. I could recall when I was taking the Tai Chi class and I started seeing the the, the uh, previews and the trailers for the Karate Kid, the remake. There was one scene in that film in particular that really resonated with me and it was the scene when the um, when the woman was on, she was sitting on this rooftop or something, I don't know what she was sitting on, but there was a snake, and they were imitating one another. And I, re I can recall the conversation that Jackie Chan and Jaden Smith had where, um, you know, Jaden Smith was really fascinated by that. Jaden Smith's character was fascinated by that. And Jaden had thought that the woman was imitating the snake, but in essence, the snake was imitating the woman. And then, it's, you know, we were also fascinated by his, his uh, artistic nunchuck maneuvers, all right? And what was interesting, though, is that I would actually go home and try to make these nunchucks. Uh, so I, one day my father said, where's the, the, the ends of my broomsticks? <laughs> and this was when theaters were still in the hood. And uh, I remember we saw, I think it was Enter the Dragon. It's kind of hard to remember right now. But uh, I think it was Enter the Dragon. And uh, wow, it was just a lot of fun. And really nothing more than that, but just pure fun. And I think shortly after that, um, I remember seeing the Green Hornet uh, battle Batman and Robin on TV. And Cato kicked Robin's ass, straight up, kicked his ass. But we went down there and I, and I got like hooked after just going like once or twice to like the movie theaters in Chinatown at that time, like the Sun Sing, the Pagoda, the Music Box, the Palace. And, um, uh, and because you were seeing films there that you couldn't see anywhere else. Kung Fu, the TV show, with the, with the old master with the white eyes, I think Ki Luk, Ki Luk. And you know, he would talk about the philosophy, they would show the candles and the Shaolin monks. Kung Fu was big. Groups of guys, girls, mainly guys, would go to the movies uh, in packs to watch these films and they talk about them. Sometimes they sit through them twice, you know, and just once they get out of there, go eat maybe, and just talk about the film all night. Um, and then it inspired them to get into clubs and join these kung fu, martial arts, karate clubs. And you know, it gave them a, a sense of pride once they got in there and understood what the art was really about. You know, the mental piece of it, because really everything we do is tied to mental. Um, my Saturday experiences were a little different. Um, right around here, there's a theater called the Fabian. Um, it's an old, old Patterson theater. And um, my parents knew the, the security guard there, and he would let me in free. So for like a good, I would say maybe three or four years, I would spend my Saturdays at the theater, like early in the morning until like, you know, late in the evening. So I was watching, you know, martial arts films, you know, horror films. It's faithful, that's it. Just, and no matter where you were, I don't care if you were in Jersey, I don't care if you were in Connecticut, I don't care if you were in New York, I don't care if... I found out yesterday that this was happening not just in New York, it was happening in Florida, it was happening in Baltimore, it was happening in Washington. Three o'clock, you know, or the, the time difference, it, it was just the fact that at that time, you know where you went at three o'clock. Drive-In Movie will continue after these messages. So they panned and scanned and dubbed 105 movies. And Run Run Shaw, who ran the Shaw Brothers studio, sold all the rights for, for these movies because he thought they were going to fail. You know, rappers, any, anyone in the you know, industry that I know that came in contact with me was B. Wu Tang. Like RZA studied here. Um, but me, like I said, I personally, I don't do karate or none of that. My thing is from the karate movies and the Wu-Tang and all of that. You know what I'm saying? It's not even, um, like I got no formal kung fu training or anything except for 
practice it when I was a kid after I saw the movies, watched it on Channel 5, and just, you know, zoning out that energy. That was pop culture of then, like how they got it today. So we was actually watching Bruce Lee, Five Deadly Venoms and all them tapes. And, you know, after you watch that, you might go in the crib in the mirror, bust some moves, do something. But that was like, that was what we had. If it wasn't that, we was watching what, Elvis, Abbott and Costello, the karate movies. We ain't, we ain't have MTV. It wasn't popping like that. We ain't have YouTube. We ain't have the Facebook. None of that was cracking like that. That subconsciously, you know, from then to now, moved us into, you know, that being a part of our DNA, Mu both musically um, and in your private life, on the private side. Just, you know, home kicking back, doing what you do. This was a part of your life.